Okay. Hello, everyone. This lesson is about habitats of animals all over the world, how to use a table of contents, and how to use an index. I'm going to share my screen with you to give you a start on those topics. This is a science and language activity as we will be using the concepts of both science and language skills. Habitats and appearance are the topics that you need to start with for your animal projects. You will be looking for titles and headings found in the table of contents and the index guide later on in this slideshow. But first, let's talk about the animal habitats. There are a number of animal habitats in our world that God has designed specifically for the animals and to help to uh, supply the oxygen and to help to use up the carbon dioxide in our world. Animal habitats are where animals live. They are regions of the world that animals share. Animal habitats are the shelter or house of an animal. And finally, they are places where animals find food, shelter, water, and space for survival. Grasslands are one of the kinds of habitat found in the world. Count with me to see how many habitats there are in the world. Grasslands, polar and arctic, desert, mountain, woodland, temperate forest, Fresh water, ocean, rainforest. You can find more information about what these habitats are in a number of ways. But today I'm going to show you how to use your content page, how to use the tool of a content page in an information book. This content page is taken from the book that I shared with you earlier this year and even read from in my videos. It's the big book of animals and it has Lego challenges in it as well. For how to use the, the content page, it's also called the table of contents. You will notice a number of headings and titles that are found in alphabetical order sometimes or in topic order that are on this page. What do you notice beside each of the titles that are listed? Yes, there are numbers. Now, some of you said it right away, what kind of numbers, but what are the numbers representing on this list? That's right. The numbers rep are the page numbers that match with the title. If you were to look up page or look for page 18, you would find information about Arctic animals. What if you were looking for grassland animals? What page would you look for? 88, you're right. So for using this content page, you would look for your animal's name. Let's, for example, Charlie is doing a flying squirrel. So Charlie, you would look for a title that would show squirrel or flying squirrel on this page. This book might not be a great choice for you, Charlie, as I don't see on a quick glance the list for a flying squirrel, but maybe it's just on the part of the page that is not showing. 
Okay, so then we're going to go to another tool that you might find. If you cannot find information that you're looking for on content page, don't give up right away. There's another tool found at the back of your book and it's called an index. An index has more of the titles and subtitles and actually keywords that are listed about the information in this book. Now this book, this index, I'm just reaching here, this index is from the Nature's Children book about rabbits. So you're going to find a lot, all of, it's actually all of the information and subtitles on, and keywords for rabbits on this page. I borrowed this book from our school library. Now, if you were to look for information about an, uh, a rabbit's habitat, you would look on an index in the, um, in the section where you would say homes or shelter or even look for the word habitat maybe in some books. And an index, something that you need to know about an index is everything is listed in alphabetical order or ABC order as sometimes we like to call it. This is when you're spelling activities where you list your words in alphabetical order will come in handy. Those same skills can be transferred to help to look for words in this page or in an index. Same as a dictionary skill. So I see that an Arctic hare is the first, first, sub, first keyword and the very last word is Warren on this page. So you would look for uh, a place or a word that means the same thing as habitat if you are looking for information about habitat. Um, if you are looking for appearance, then you would look for body part names like ears or maybe you would look for fur or maybe you would look for words that are saying something about description or even the word appearance. If you look at this page that is on the slideshow right now, you will see that there is a word that says homes and it has a page number behind it, page 10. Every word, every keyword that is listed on this page of the index has either one or a list of page numbers. That means you will find that word, let's see, go to where it says home under the title rabbits in the second column. We'll put my thing, my mouse there. So under rabbits, find the word home. I see that page 13 is listed there. But maybe you are going, you are ready to find research about babies or the young and offspring. Then you would go to where it says babies up here and look how many page numbers are listed there. That means that on page six. 25, 26, 29, 42, and 46, all of those pages have the word babies on it and you will be able to gather information about a rabbit babies. So that is how to use the index of a book. Now I have a recommendation, a book recommendation for you. It is called The Great Capehawk Tree. It's by Lynn Sherry and you can find it and other read aloud um, copies on YouTube <clears throat> or perhaps you have a pub London Public Library card and can find an e-copy of The Great Capehawk Tree. The reason why I am recommending this book is because it talks about uh, habitat, the rainforest habitat. 
And it tells a story of how the animals, all the animals live in this great kapok tree and they are trying to save their habitat. It teaches about conservation of habitat and how we need to make wise choices as humans, as people, as God's people, to protect both the animals and their habitat. And how can we do that? So in this story, it does finish off, I must warn you, it does finish off by referring to Mother Earth. But I would like you to think about, of course, as not Mother Earth, but of God's creation, that God is in charge and he is the creator of all of our world, not some foreign thing that is called, uh, that, or some outside idea that is called Mother Earth. Maybe you've heard of that, uh, that reference before. There is also a child in the story that is uh, from the, if that is a First Nations person in this region of the rainforest. And you will see that he, has, he is wearing different clothing than what we are used to. So maybe you will notice that as well. So I hope you enjoy reading this story if you get a chance. And I hope you will also enjoy and appreciate all the different habitats that God has made just right for all of his animals and perfect for make, maintaining the environment that we need to survive and thrive in his kingdom.